everyone, and thank you for coming to today's Play Attention webinar. My name is Gwen Sorley, and I will be your host today. I really do appreciate you coming to our second webinar in this series, How to Make ADHD Your Superpower. Uh, last time we spoke about creativity, and today we are going to be talking about finding your passion. Now, a couple of things I want uh, to mention before we get started. One is that we are recording this event. So at the end of the webinar, you will receive an email with the replay link. That way you can share this with any family members or staff members who are unable to attend the live event. Also remember there is a chat box. So if at any time you do want to type in a question or a comment, please do so. It is always a lot of fun when we get to interact with one another. Uh, I did see a couple of people use the raise your hand icon. So just keep in mind, if you have something to say, make certain you type it for me in that chat box. Just go ahead and type it in at any time. So again, today we're going to be talking about finding your passion because we really know that if you can discover your passion, it is very easy to have lots of energy and enthusiasm towards that activity or that topic. You know, many times people with ADHD are described as being perhaps overly sensitive or highly emotional. And sometimes we hear that in the context of being a negative, but is it really necessarily a bad thing? If you think about Leonardo da Vinci, he's described as possibly having ADHD and yet look at the painting he did in the Sistine Chapel. You couldn't have completed that or he couldn't have completed that if he was not highly emotional and a passionate about that job. So what we're going to be discussing is how to bring out the best in your ADHD superpowers, how to manage these traits, discover your, and discover something to get passionate about. When you look at someone who may be uh, doing something like this boy is doing here, he's playing his guitar with a lot of excitement and enthusiasm. So you may be watching someone engaged in a musical instrument or a sport. You may be listening to someone who's speaking on a particular topic and you can tell right away just by their enthusiasm and their energy that they are passionate about what they're doing. I want you to think about that. Are you passionate about something right now? Do you have that passion? Do you have that enthusiasm for something in your life? Passion's important to have in our lives. It makes us feel good. It leads you to success oftentimes. It makes it hard to quit because if you really love something, if you're really enthusiastic about it, it's hard to give up on it, isn't it? It also helps you grow because as you go through that experience, you're constantly learning new things and it allows you to affect other people in a positive way, which is probably really important um, for many of us. And that's what drives our passion when we know that we're affecting other people around us in a positive way. Oftentimes though, if you have ADHD, it might be at times very difficult for you to envision the future or set long-term goals. So you might find that sometimes you feel very restless or bored or unmotivated or directionless. And I often hear people express that to us as they call in and we're chatting about the different areas of ADHD. But I often hear it when they talk about their teenagers as well. I just don't know what motivates him. I don't know what he's passionate about. So we know that it is important. It's not something to stress over though, because not all of us know what our passion is, right? It's a process. So you may feel unmotivated and you may feel bored. However, once you discover your passion, you will be able to focus and get things done with that enthusiasm and energy. And uh, there's a question about the PowerPoints. I'll share the PDF with this as well. Good question. 
So what is your passion? As I said, many of us don't know. We're not necessarily born with it and we don't necessarily know. But if you do know, if you know what your passion is, if you have a current passion in your life where you feel that enthusiasm, type in the chat box what your enthusiasm is or what your passion is. Or maybe your teenager or your younger child has a real passion. What is their passion? Go ahead and share that in the chat box so we can just share some of those uh, passions with everyone in the group. And again, it's okay if you are kind of unsure of it right now, that you don't really know what your passion is at this point. That's okay. We all go through those periods, don't we? And it is ever changing as well. So we have a couple of people that says, Mandy said, uh, let's see, let me scroll back here, helping special needs families. And that's what we were talking about, how you can affect other people in a positive way. So she's found that as her passion. Uh, Karen says hers is drawing. A uh, says passion working with individuals with autism and individuals with behavioral issues. Excellent. Cheryl says teaching my eight-year-old grandson. Excellent. Uh, Dana says helping low-income families. So again, many of you are saying your passion stems from that ability to positively affect others. Uh, Karen says, helping those with mental disabilities. Excellent. You all have really good. Millicent, her passion is dogs. Excellent. So how do we discover our passion? If you're unsure of it right now, or if you feel like you're in the middle of a changing process right now in your life, and you're not really certain of your direction, or maybe you just want to help your child start discovering his or her passion, how do we do that? Well, you have to be an active participant. You can't find your passion by just thinking it, thinking about it in your head, right? This is a journey. And so you are actively engaged in creating your passion. And you can create your passion by doing, exploring, or trying. So it's much like you can think about it as you need to become a lifelong learner, right? You need to get out there and experience. You're not going to discover your passion by sitting on the couch and thinking about it. So you have to be actively engaged. So perhaps you take a job that you're unsure of, but it intrigues you. There may be some interest there and you think, maybe I should just try it. You know, so many of us at times say, I don't know if I want to take that job because I'm not certain it's my passion. But if it intrigues you, you have an interest in the topic or the type of job it is, you may want to try it because you never know what you'll discover in that process of trying something new. Take a class in a subject you've never tried or learn a new language. Try an art project that's new to you. Explore different outdoor clubs and try one, travel. That gives you a lot of different experiences when you travel to new places. I'll tell you three things that I have tried over the last year, three new things for me. Um, one was I decided to take a beekeeping class. So I had watched a documentary on TV, something about our food and pollination and the bees. And I, it sparked my interest. So I signed up for a beekeeping class uh, locally. I took the class and by the end of the season, I had two hives and I had 150 pounds of honey. So that new experience really gave me the opportunity to discover something that I'm pretty passionate about. I loved learning about the bees and their different jobs and being outside working in the hives. That was a real great experience for me, which I will continue on uh, and I do continue on today. The other is I started raising chickens with a friend of mine. So that was a new experience that I enjoy. And the third was an art class. Now, the first two, I really enjoy that they were both new to me. I knew nothing about the subjects, but the last one, the art class is not my passion. 
I took the art class, I gave it a try, but I am not an artist. I am not very good at it. Um, and I don't even have enough interest to pursue that, to get better at it. Um, but it was something that I learned. In doing that art class though, I did discover that I am truly interested in art history. I like to learn about other artists, real artists, and their uh, inspiration or the techniques that they use. That is what I do like about art. I will never be an artist myself, but I do like to learn about art history and the techniques. So even though that art class wasn't really for me, at least I went out there and I had that experience and I learned something new. I, I had, it did peak yet another interest that maybe I can pursue down the road. So always be thinking about what you want to learn next, what you want to try next, because you never know what can develop from that. And you never want to quit trying. Once you are in that experience, it's important that you focus, observe, and listen. Like we were saying, you have to be actively engaged and active engagement means you're paying attention, that you're in the moment. You know, so many times we are having an experience, but we're not paying attention to the experience, right? We're not really paying attention to how we are feeling in that moment because we're so distracted by everything else we might need to get done that day. So it's super important that as you are experiencing these new things, that you're putting all of your energy and all of your attention into that experience and find out, listen, find out what you have to contribute. Many of you said that you are passionate about helping families with special needs. Uh, Dana was interested in helping or passionate about helping low-income children, uh, families. Cheryl, uh, her passion is teaching her six-year-old grandson. So I'm certain that all of you discovered this passion because you know that you are contributing something, right? You've listened. Cheryl has seen her grandson's face light up when he learned something, right? Dana has experienced that gratitude that someone uh, extends when they are so happy that they received her assistance. And so it's really important that you don't miss those moments, right? That you are actively engaged and you're paying attention to what you're contributing because that really inspires your passion. So make certain that you're focused, that you're not missing these moments. It's so easy for us to be distracted. And you know, here on the screen, I said, make certain your kids hear what they're good at because we need to model this for our children. So they start seeing that this is something important that they really should discover what they're good at and embrace that. And, but sometimes it's a little bit easier for our children to figure out what their passion is because they're not as distracted by the day to day, right? They're not necessarily like us where we, might be engaged in a project, or maybe we're helping a neighbor with some gardening, and we're really not there though. We're thinking about our next meeting. We're thinking about a discussion we had earlier that day. We're thinking about an argument we had with our spouse. We're not experiencing the moment. And if you aren't in the moment, then you may miss some critical things. Nancy says her passion is repurposing things. That is interesting, I like that. It's really, you know, we're fortunate here at Play Attention because it is easy for us to be passionate about what we do. And as I was working on this webinar this week, uh, one of our clients, Ben, who you see on the screen, he sent in a testimonial. He sent in a letter to us, just letting us know how he was progressing. And we're actually um, featuring this um, on our social media right now and on our blogs, because it's really important that we understand how we're contributing. It's important for us as a staff at Play Attention that we always take that time 
to listen to what we're doing, to how we're contributing to others. And this came across my desk. So I thought it was so important to share because as I'm in the day to day, like all of you are, as we are answering emails and answering phone calls and maybe working on a budget or maybe we're hiring new staff or training new staff and we're going through the day to day, but then you stop and you let the experience really consume you and you listen to the feedback and you know what you're contributing. And that's where the passion lies. That's why you can power through those emails and the budget planning and the just mundane day-to-day -day tasks that you need to do. And when this came through, it just reaffirmed my passion because Ben is 27 years old. And as in his story here, always had a short attention span and low energy. And that caused him to pass up opportunities and he was terrified to pursue academics. But then he started working with attention and he had his customized plan. And after a couple of uh, months, he noticed that he had more energy, that he was focused. And he actually, I love this part where he says, I felt confident to lead a group of high school freshmen at winter camp. And he sees the changes at work. And so now he's even doing better in his job. And he has enrolled to take classes at a university to start working on his bachelor's, something that he had given up hope for. So this is what helps us be passionate. And like I said, we always take that time as a staff to sit back, let go of the day-to-day -day tasks that we need to do, and we listen and we understand why we do what we do. And that's the passion that drives us. Now, we are fortunate to have passion in our career, but the passion that you're thinking about, it might not necessarily be your career. It might simply be something that enhances your life. And I have a good example of this from when I took that beekeeping course. I met uh, one of the main beekeepers Jim, and he is one of the most passionate people about bees that you would ever meet. He knows everything there is to know about bees and protecting them and raising them and the importance of, of bees in our environment. And he loves talking about it. He loves educating people. So you can see that passion. And if you go to his house, his entire backyard covered in hives. He has 75 beehives in his backyard. In his kitchen, it's not a kitchen. It is a honey manufacturing facility. There's no uh, kitchen table. There's a big honey extractor so he can extract honey 24 seven. So this is his passion. And in my mind, I'm thinking, where do you sell all of this? And I asked him, where do you sell all your honey? And he said, well, here and there, you know, there are a couple of places, the co-op takes some, but a lot of people know what I do. So they'll just stop by. And I'm thinking we need to get out there and sell to all the local restaurants and all the local shops and farmers markets. And you need a website and a better label and, you know, write a blog and educate people. And I'm throwing out these ideas because that's where my mind went, right? Making his passion into more of a career. And he said, no, because then it would be a job. And I don't want it to be a job. I want it to be my passion. And so that's important for you to, to recognize, right? It may not be your career, but that passion that you have in your life, even if it's not your career, it still enhances your life. So we know that we wanna get out there and try and explore. And we know that we have to be immersed in the experiences that we're having, really listen, focus, be present. But it's also important to have the right mindset. And you probably have heard in the past about a couple of different mindsets. There's the growth mindset, and the fixed mindset. 
And this has been researched uh, in a lot of different areas, but they did actually do some research of how mindset actually affects your passion, affects your pursuit of new interests and your passions. And finding a growth mindset actually has been found that it makes it easier to develop new interests. So a growth mindset, if you have a growth mindset, that means that you believe your intelligence and your talents can be developed over time, right? You grow and you change, you evolve. That's a growth mindset. A fixed mindset, you're locked in, you're hardwired. If you have a fixed mindset, that means you believe intelligence is fixed and unchangeable. So if you're not good at this now, you're not going to be good at it ever, no matter what. So think about your mindset because it really does make a difference. And it's important, especially if you work with children, if, they're, if it's your own child or the students that you work with, make certain that you're always modeling and helping them develop this growth mindset where they can know that they are active participants in how things evolve for them. So I think if you look at the right-hand side of the screen, this is a great graphic to have uh, just in your office or in your home to refer to it, that you want to pursue that growth mindset. Because if you look at the desires, it's really interesting. If you look at the desires of a fixed mindset person, they say, I'll stick to what I know, either I'm good at it or I'm not. So if you have that fixed mindset, and I know that it may not be your mindset, but you know someone with that mindset. If you have that mindset, are you going to go out there? Are you going to explore and try new things? Chances are you're not, right? But the growth mindset says, I want to learn new things. I'm eager to take risks. So there's a huge difference between that mindset. Then the skills. If you have a fixed mindset, you think it's fine the way it is and nothing's going to change. The growth mindset things, is this really my best work? What else can I do to improve? Now, when they continued to research how the growth mindset or how mindset in general affects discovering new interest. There was a group of researchers who actually interviewed 47 undergraduates and asked them to write about their expectations for a newfound passion. And when they asked individuals who had more of a fixed mindset, their expectation was that if I find my passion, then it should be so easy. It should be easy for me. It should take very little effort on my part. And I should have lots of motivation to complete that or be engaged. So they thought that once you find your passion, everything after that is easy. And it's easy all the way through. But those people with a growth mindset said, it's great if you find your passion. But even if it's your passion, there are going to be some setbacks. There are going to be challenges that you still have to work through. So yes, it's my passion, but I understand. I have a realistic expectation that things are going to go off course at times, right? How many things have worked out exactly how you had them planned in your mind? Not very many. So it's really important as you go through this process to maintain realistic expectations. And when things go off course, persevere. If you look down at the effort and setbacks on the fixed mindset versus the growth mindset, if the effort on the fixed uh, mindset says, this is a waste of time, there's a lot to figure out. Whereas the growth mindset says, I know this will help me even though it's difficult. And about setbacks, it's easier to give up. I'm really not smart. However, the growth mindset, when there are setbacks that occur, says, I'll use another strategy. My mistakes help me learn. And you know, that really lines up to what the researchers found in the study, because they actually found that 
those individuals with the fixed mindset, as soon as things got difficult, they gave up. They left what they felt was their passion because it got a little difficult. So it's really important that you start developing that growth mindset, make that a priority. And then once you find your passion, have real less realistic expectations and know that even though it's your passion, you're going to have to work at it. And there are going to be setbacks. Now, finally, we know that passion is not a plan, right? You have to devise a plan if you're going to pursue that passion. Passion is a feeling that can really motivate you and fuel your energy, but you still need a plan in order to pursue your passion. So what we recommend is that you devise what is called a SMART goal. Now, some of you might be very familiar with SMART goals, and it really is just a way, it's an organizer where you can set up and you can plan out because again, part of weak executive function, oftentimes we have difficulty really planning and organizing and prioritizing. But if you use the SMART uh, model, then it really will help you in your planning process. So SMART uh, stands for specific. So you're gonna have a specific goal you're going to be able to measure the goals along the way, the steps along the way. You're going to assess the goals and make certain that they are truly achievable and realistic. And then you're going to put out a timeline for yourself. So this is the acronym for goal setting, SMART goals. If you are interested in more information on how to devise a SMART goal plan, Type in SMART in the chat box because we have an ebook that breaks down the whole process. So if you would like to receive that ebook, just type in SMART and we'll make certain that we follow up in an email and get that uh, ebook to you because I think it will really help you in this process. All right, so we've gone through a lot of different steps that you can take in order to start pursuing your passion. But maybe some of you are thinking, you know, you're telling me to be focused on the experience. You're asking me to not be distracted. You're asking me to plan and prioritize and organize. But these are all skills that are difficult for me because I have an attention difficulty or I have weak executive function. And that's where play attention can help. And of course, I bring this up because again, this is my passion. I've been doing this, working with play attention for 25 years. And so it is my passion. And I know we can help you with those core cognitive skills that lay the foundation for strong executive function so that you can take all of these suggestions today. You can learn how to manage certain characteristics of ADHD and make them your superpowers. And we do this in a very unique way in that we integrate the feedback technology. So this is our body wave armband. And that body wave armband, remember, monitors your brain activity that tells us how attentive you are. And then all of that information is given over to the computer where you're allowed to control all of the cognitive exercises just with your mind or more specifically, your attentive state alone. And you receive constant and immediate feedback as to whether or not you truly are focused and paying attention. And we bring you through a series of cognitive exercises. Now, everyone's plan is customized. So you don't necessarily need all of the different cognitive areas we address, but we'll work with you. You'll be assigned a personal executive function coach to actually set up your program just as Ben worked with his executive function coach, we set up a specific plan to address his particular needs and then took him through a tutorial to make certain he was comfortable with everything before he started working and then guided him through the rest of the way. So the different areas that we address within play attention include attention stamina, your ability to direct and sustain your attention at will so that when you are having those new experiences, 
you will be engaged in the moment. Task completion, so that you'll be able to start and complete in a timely manner. You'll be able to filter all of those distractions while you're engaged in an activity. We address working memory, auditory processing, social skills, mindfulness, impulse control, and much more. We will look at your specific strengths and weaknesses and customize a plan to help you develop those skills so that we can truly start pursuing our passions and making ADHD your superpower. This is what I recommend you start doing today. This is something that you could actually, um, this passion survey is something that you could do today at home or in your office. You may do it as an individual or perhaps you would do it as a family, uh, something that you could do all together as a family. You know, earlier when we were talking about a, uh, you know, that passion alone is not a plan, right? And we talked about how you have to develop that plan, use your SMART goals. And a lot of you here have requested a SMART goal um, ebook, and we will make certain we get that out to you. And uh, when you're looking at your planning, it is important because if you have a goal to, let's say your passion is uh, biking, you love to bike and you actually um, want to get other people involved in biking because you know that it is good for your body. You know that it makes your brain sharper. You know that getting out there and being in the green and biking can actually help uh, calm or help control different symptoms of ADHD. You may know that it's great for building relationships and communication. So there are all these reasons that you're passionate about biking, but you can't go to the bank and say, you know, I'm really passionate about biking. So I want to create a bike park and I want you to give me a loan so I can do this. They're not going to give you a loan based on your passion. They're going to ask you for a plan. So really, we want to take some steps to see what we're passionate about and make a plan. So like I said, start thinking about passion if you haven't been doing that or you haven't been modeling this with your child or your students or your clients. And this is something simple that you can do, as I said, with an individual or as an individual or with your whole family. And just ask these questions. What brings you happiness? And you can just say them out loud or you can write them down. What brings you happiness? What makes you smile or laugh? What's meaningful for you? What are your skills and talents? So these are great prompting questions to get you thinking about your passion, to get you actively engaged in the process. And then once you've written all those things down or you've expressed them, is there a common theme among all of these? If there is, then write down the common theme. What is it? And maybe you as a family, let's say your whole family decides that biking is your passion as a family. And so you want to pursue that passion in some way. And then you want to brainstorm all the possibilities, right? All the possibilities that you can do with this passion. Maybe you do go to the bank and you ask for that loan so that you can develop your own bike park. Or maybe when you do the reality check, okay? And the reality check is the next part. Maybe you discover, well, at this point in our lives with the other things we have going on, and what we know, the effort and the time it would take and the organization it would take to actually develop an entire bike park, maybe that this isn't the right time. Maybe we can't do that right now. So what are some other possibilities? Well, you could just organize a bike club in your community. Maybe you'll get people together in a biking club and you'll organize different rides. Or maybe you could start collecting bikes asking for bikes as a donation 
And then, you know, you have good word of mouth and you know lots of people in your or in your community. So you'll be able to reach out to individuals. And then, you know, your spouse is really good at fixing bikes and your kids are really good at fixing up bikes. So you can go out there and ask for donations. Your family can fix up the bikes that are donated. And then you can give the bikes away to families who can't necessarily afford bikes, but we could really benefit from the experience. So you brainstorm all of these possibilities. Then you do a reality check. Which one of these can we really do um, and really make a difference and accomplish? And at, once you do that reality check and narrow it down to what you're going to take a plan of action on, then you write down those steps of action. That's where you start writing your plan and using the SMART goals in order to really develop your passion and reach your goal. So this is something that you can do. Uh, maybe, like I said, something simple that you could just start today and really start laying the, the foundation to develop and be actively engaged in your passion. I had a good question that was submitted um, earlier today before the webinar. And Jill said, I'm a super reflective person by nature, but I have always had a hard time answering that question about passion. As a mature adult, I've realized that I'm consistently interested in or passionate about a few topics, like three or four at a time. I struggle to focus on one. For example, I can't select a better job option because three or four job types or positions appeal to me. Is there another way to word this question about passion that might help me clarify or narrow it down? And Jill, I brought your question up at this point because I thought that this passion survey could help you in that process, right? Because you are recognizing that it is a process and it's great that you have lots of interests, right? You have that growth mindset already, right? So that you have, you have the growth mindset, which is great. You have the uh, outlook that you are a lifelong learner, that there's lots of different things that you could try. And so that's important. So you have answered all of the questions at the top. You know what brings you happiness, you've discovered some of your passions, but now how do you narrow it down? And I think that's where we get into the last three here. And this might help you in this process, narrowing it down. So you said at times you might have a hard time deciding which job to take because there are three that interest you. So those are your three opportunities or possibilities that you've brainstormed, right? Then do a reality check. This might narrow it down to just a couple and do that reality check. Like I said earlier, as a family, you might look at the bike park. That's a great future plan, but not something we could do right now in this moment. So once you do that reality check, what's actually appropriate at this time in your life or what you can actually accomplish, then it might narrow it down to a couple. And then take those two ideas and start writing your SMART goals. And as you go through the actual planning on your timeline and the specific measurable goals and deciding if it, they are actually achievable, you may start to even narrow that down a little bit more. So I think you have the passions all figured out. You have lots of things you want to try, but now try to do those last three steps to help you narrow down the options because it is easy to kind of get overwhelmed in that process as well. Okay, some of you are asking how to request the uh, SMART Goals ebook and a lot of you have requested it. So we'll also include that uh, ebook in the email follow-up because almost everyone here has requested it. So I'll make certain it just simply goes out in our ebook, in our email follow-up. So remember that even once you discover your passion, that you go through all these steps we talked about and you discover your passion, passions change and that's okay. Just because you change course or maybe you find that you're not as passionate in something that you used to be, 
that's okay. It doesn't equate to failure. Keep in mind that we evolve and so do our passions. And that's the good thing, right? That's part of the growth mindset. So you want to keep listening, keep exploring, and keep learning because that's what's going to keep the passion going and always embrace change. And that's part of that mental flexibility with an executive function that we need to really develop and something that we can do with and play attention to help lay the foundation so that mental flexibility is just a little bit easier. So I'm glad that you attended today and I hope I gave you some ideas on how to direct yourself and become really involved and, and active, actively engaged in finding your passion. So create your passion by doing, exploring, and trying. Remember once you are out there and you're doing and trying and exploring that you focus on the experience. Be present, listen. You want to start developing that growth mindset. That's something that you really want to start developing when you find yourself and your self-talk uh, getting in that fixed mindset where you think, I can't change anything. It, it just, it is what it is, right? You hear that all the time. It is what it is. Change that mindset. If you hear your child getting into that fixed mindset, redirect so that we have that growth mindset. Have realistic expectations and persevere. Not everything is going to be simple. Even though you're passionate about that, there are going to be some challenges that occur, but you persevere and you work through it. And also remember to devise your SMART goal because passion in and of itself is not a plan. So I hope these steps have been helpful. And I do hope that you can start cultivating these passions and discovering what you enjoy, how it enhances your life, and we can learn how to manage these traits of our emotions and our um, desires and really make them into our superpowers. So next steps that I want to mention, the next webinar in this series is going to be next Thursday at this same time. And we're going to be talking about energy, how to channel your endless energy for positive outcomes. So if you would like us to register you, if you haven't registered as of yet, just type in energy and we will make certain we get you registered for our next webinar in this series. And it really goes hand in hand because like we said, once you find that passion, your energy will be limitless. And so if you would like to attend next week's webinar, and uh, that webinar is going to be led by Amber Carcel. Many of you have attended her webinars in the past. Uh, just type in energy and we'll make certain we get you registered for that event. So that will be the third webinar in this series. Now, just to mention too, we are re uh, recording all these events and we are creating eBooks to go with them. So when you want to review the other webinars and eBooks that are associated in this webinar series, just go to our website at playattention.com and click on webinars. And then you'll see it says uh, ADHD superpower webinar series recordings. And that's where you can access the webinars, the podcasts and the eBooks that go in this series. Also, there's another recorded series, the series that was before this one about executive function and all of those webinars and eBooks and podcasts are posted there. So there are two series actually up on our website right now. Um, if you did type in uh, energy, we will make certain that we get uh, that out to you. Our next play attention webinar. So if you uh, want more information on play attention and its educational foundation uh, and the process and everything that's involved in our program, you may want to attend our webinar on April 22nd, which is not next Thursday, but the following Thursday. Um, so just type in PA, we'll know that's for play attention, and we'll get you registered for that webinar. And again, during that webinar, we're going to be talking about how play attention utilizes the latest research in neuroplasticity 
and NASA-inspired body wave technology to improve executive function and self-regulation. So if you'd like to attend that Play Attention webinar, please do simply type PA in the chat box and we'll get you registered for that as well. Uh, we do have a couple of assessments available, and I know many of you have uh, asked about our assessments that we have available because we've been talking about them in many of our webinars, in our previous webinars. So if you are interested in doing um, an ADHD assessment with us and consultation, uh, we have two assessments available. One is called FOCUS, which is a norm reference test of attentional control. It is computer-based. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes. And at the end of the 20 minutes, we'll receive a full report that tells us how you performed compared to the performance of your peers. We also have the brief available, which is a behavior rating of executive function. Our assessments, our assessment package uh, is typically $50 per assessment. If you do the package, of course, it's $100 for the assessment. But with the webinar special, you'll receive that at half price. So if you would like one or the other or both, just type in assessments and we'll reach out to you to help you with that process as well. So again, it's focus assessment, which is a norm reference test of attentional control or the brief, which is a, re a behavior rating of executive function. You could do one or the other or both, um, whichever you would like, but you will receive a 50% discount for being part of this webinar. And you know, it's not enough just to assess the different areas of difficulties, right? Because that's what we can assess. It's also important to follow that up with a plan of action. And so after you complete the assessments, we'll schedule about a 45 minute block of time to review the results and talk about a customized play attention plan for your review. So you can really get an understanding of how the program works and whether or not it will be the right learning tool for you. How can we customize that plan to address your specific needs? So you can uh, request the uh, assessments and we'll send you information and that includes the consultation. But if you just want to have a consultation and talk to one of our executive function specialists, just type in consultation and we'll schedule a time. No assessment really necessary. We can just talk about your different strengths and weaknesses um, and talk about the program a bit. So if you want a one-on-one -on -one consult, just type in consultation and we'll reach out to you. All right, Dana, as always, it's a pleasure attending this webinar. I learn so much every time you offer them. Play Attention is amazing. Thank you, Dana, and we appreciate you coming. I know you've been coming to all of our webinars and all of our series, so I'm glad you appreciate them, and I'm glad you get a lot out of them. Again, it's comments like that that really drives our passion and what we do. Thank you so much, everyone. If you have any other questions, please do type them in. Uh, or reach out to us on our website or call our, our 800 number and we'd be happy to chat with you further. We look forward to seeing you at next week's webinar. Uh, we also look forward to seeing you at our webinar on the 22nd. Um, we will get the follow-up out to you with the recorded webinar and the smart ebook that many of you people have asked for. Thanks so much, everyone. You take care and we'll see you next week.